All right. So today the CDC released a press release uh, saying that the first confirmed case of Omicron variant is in the United States. It's in San Francisco. Let's read through it. Uh, San Francisco, the California and San Francisco Departments of Public Health have confirmed a recent case of COVID-19 among an individual in California that was caused by the Omicron variant. Individual was a traveler who returned from South Africa on November 22nd, 2021. Individual had mild symptoms that are improving. Is self-quarantining has been testing positive. Um, all close contacts have been contacted and have tested negative. Genomic sequence is conducted at University of California, San Francisco. And the sequence is confirmed at CDC as being consistent with the Omicron variant. This will be the first confirmed case of COVID-19 caused by the Omicron variant uh, detected in the United States. Okay, so remember in a previous video, um, I said that it's most likely that the Omicron variant is already here. Well, it turns out it's been here for over a week. Um, and let's look at, I think it's kind of interesting to talk about this case because it, it it highlights a lot of the um, the problems with uh, COVID-19 in um, why it has become such a pandemic and why it's so difficult to control. Because let's look at the timeline of this. Um, the timeline of this was Tuesday, November 23rd, was when the variant was first discovered by sequencing some samples. Then later on that day, they had an urgent meeting in South Africa to discuss the results. Then they did detailed analysis and they figured out that a lot of the mutations seemed to be con um, concerning. And there were many of these in the, in the cluster around uh, Guateng there. And then they did a news report on um, uh, Wednesday the 24th. And kind of we heard about it in the press Thursday the 25th of November. Um, and, or Friday. Thursday or Friday is when kind of the world press got a hold of it. So that's when we, that's like the first time we knew about it was Thursday or Friday, November 25th or 26th. This person, uh, whoever this person is, was back on a flight on November 22nd. That was before the variant was even sequenced. That's before any human being on the planet knew about this variant. It hadn't even, it wasn't even sequenced until the previous day. So by the time the variant has been sequenced um, and identified, and South Africa has a, actually a very good genomic sequencing um, infrastructure, and they've been doing a really good job of uh, sequencing their, you know, doing uh, genomic sequencing uh, surveillance of their cases. And that's how they found it relatively early on uh, November 23rd. But however, it's clear that it had been circulating in the population probably for a few weeks um, before they sequenced the, uh, the variant. And, and this person um, went to South Africa and caught it there and brought it back. Um, and so it's unclear whether he caught it in, in South Africa or he caught it from someone else on the plane from South Africa. Um, but it happened on November 22nd. And then, see, the problem with COVID-19 and the reason that it's so difficult to control is that this person had no clue that he was infected and was possibly spreading this variant around. Um, he was asymptomatic um, until he started having symptoms about seven days later. And that's when he got tested on November 29th. And that's when it was positive. And then they did uh, the sequencing at UCSF and they confirmed it to be the Omicron variant. So for, for at some time between November 22nd and November 29th, during that week, he was asymptomatic, and at least for part of that week, he was spreading the virus, or he was potentially spreading the virus. So it's unclear if he was um, infectious at the time of the flight. In that case, everyone on that flight needs to be tested, but you know, because of con like contact tracing is difficult to do in the U.S. because of privacy concerns. So, you know, in this time, like, you know, let's say there's 200 people on that plane. Um, they will have gone to see their family and their friends. They've been kind of living their life, assuming that all is well um, in the in the seven days. And then who knows if, if if they contacted, you know, four or five people a day, that's 200 people times four or five people times seven days, and then those people all went and met their family and their friends, all those people. So it becomes 
potentially thousands of people that are um, infected, potentially, uh, within a week. So th that's why it's so difficult to control because you have asymptomatic spread. SARS-1, you weren't infectious until you had symptoms. So therefore, people that had symptoms could get tested and get quarantined. But in this situation, people don't even know that they have it. So they don't know to quarantine um, until they've already been spreading it for several days. So that's what makes this um, so difficult. And then the other interesting thing is if you read further reports, I'm going to close this down, um, what you find out is that this person had a full course of Moderna vac vaccination. So he had a full course of Moderna vaccination. He had not had the booster shot. So he got infected um, despite a full course of uh, vaccination. Now, some people are going to jump to the conclusion like, well, this means the vaccine doesn't work for this variant. That is a uh, logical fallacy because this is an N of one. And, um, you know, even let's say, let's say, for example, that the Moderna vaccine was 99% um, effective against this variant, which probably isn't the case. Um, but e even if it were 99%, if you get a random sample of a hundred, if you get a hundred people and you just pick that one person where it fails, then it can look. He could. This person could have been the one in a hundred where the vaccine was not effective. So you can't. You cannot draw any conclusion of any sort um, f the, from one individual having a breakthrough infection with the Omicron. It does not mean that. Uh, that the vaccine is highly ineffective. It doesn't mean that it's 0%. It could be anywhere from 0% uh, to 99.99% effective. Um, we know it's not 100% effective because one person had a breakthrough, but it could, you, 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 we have no idea what the range is. So with one person, you just can't draw any conclusions. That's why these things take time. We have to see lots of breakthrough infections to see what the um, vaccine efficacy is. So until we have like hundreds or thousands um, of people uh, getting uh, breakthrough infections, it's hard to get a really good grasp on um, how effective the vaccine is. They're gonna probably do studies where they test, um, they, they code the new spike protein in a plasmid and express it and use convalescent serum from people with natural immunity and actually uh, serum from people that had vaccine immunity and see if there's a neutralizing antibodies against that. That doesn't test for any T cell responses. So in the lab, you can get some idea of how effective it's going to be those studies are probably being done as we speak in the labs at um, you know biontech pfizer moderna johnson johnson those labs are probably doing those tests right now um, and we will soon hear about them um, but r real world vaccine efficacy is going to take weeks to figure out um, uh, if it's effective or not you can't draw a conclusion from this one person that had a breakthrough infection um, although it's very tempting to, and uh, people who want to drive some narrative are gonna are going to uh, latch on to this. But yeah, so as you can see, the the problem is is because the uh, disease has a pre-symptomatic or asymptomatic phase where people are still infectious, it becomes extremely hard to quarantine people to control this thing, and the contact tracing it with a long um, asymptomatic yet infectious period makes it so that you potentially have thousands of people with uh, potential exposures within a week time off of one person. All right. So anyways, I, I, I think people want to know a lot and people are very um, anxious to know more about it, but we just have to be patient to get good data. Any, any data now is, any information now is a, is a lot of speculation and all the um, news stories have headlines that sound very ominous, but they say might, may, could, and so there's no definitive information. All right, thanks for watching.